Hello and welcome to Iron Viz 2024 Behind the Build. I'm Andy Cogreve, one of the co-hosts of Iron Viz. If you're new to Iron Viz, well, it's the biggest data visualization competition in the world. Each year, hundreds of members of the Tableau Data Fan enter a feeder competition with the chance to go on stage at Tableau Conference with two of the finalists to build the best viz they can in just 20 minutes. This year, the theme is all about movies, so let's get rolling. During Behind the Build, what you're going to see is our finalists chat with our Suvisa, talk about all the design choices, the data challenges, the opportunities and the insights that led to their final 20-minute build and data story. So with that, we're joined by Pata Gagova, whose uh, entry in the final was all about gender trends in movies over time. And she's sitting down with Peter Johnson to talk about what went on behind the build. All right, thanks, Andy. Uh, Pacha, what, what do you think? I mean, when, we're, when you're starting now building the, this, my, my first question is like, how did you approach the data? When you got the raw INDB data and everything, was it in good shape? Or, or what did you do before you started to analyze the things? Yeah, well, I started looking into the data, obviously. Uh, there was a lot of it. Uh, I'm not now sure about the number, but higher tens of millions of rows, so a lot. Uh, so I started somehow checking uh, the shape, you know, looking for nulls and just some random values, duplicates and all that. And uh, yeah, then I was uh, listing the things I probably should get rid of. Um, because of such a huge size of the data source. And that's basically what I did later on. Because you, you used desktop, right? You, you did all the cleansing in, in desktop. Yeah, okay. Yeah. I didn't use prep uh, since I was not planning on using any complicated calculations or some data transformations. So I did all that in, uh, in desktop and it was sufficient. Uh, I used the extract, uh, some filters there. So that was that worked for me. Really well. Any advanced calculations you're using? I think you're doing a lot of good uh, uh, booleans, uh, if and else, and you have some uh, some fixed LODs or yeah. anything there you want to call. Um, I used uh, I think only a few LODs, level of detail calculations, uh, where I just needed to fix something on, for example, series title, the combination of the yeah. awards. Um, so that one. But again, as I said, nothing to no extreme in terms of calculations nice but it's a tedious work and you 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 did fine here this is this is like the beginning and i think everybody's you're, you're very stressed right that right in the beginning of like mm -hmm. the build part of getting all this this right here you're building your first sheet and that's like the famous stacked bar that we got uh, <laughs> we got called out on uh, what, what was your approach there we're going to compare different decades of uh, tv series history well what how did you do this? Yep. Uh, well, yeah, uh, I remember us being called out uh, because of how difficult it might be to compare more than two values. Uh, but I'm pretty confident it uh, went well here because we are, uh, yes, we are comparing three values, but the main one, which is showing the share of series uh, where there's more women's appearances, is even uh, colored differently. So I believe that's what you know, gets users' attention and they know what to focus on. So, yeah, I like this type of chart. You can store some information in it, but still make it quite understandable. And you already changed the color there, but let's get back to the colors in a second. And 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 now from those decades, you're going to the uh, the bubble chart here, where we this you, you're normalizing the data here, right, in the calculations or, or in the uh, yeah, in the on, calculation, on the exactly, as you say. In the yeah. uh, here I'm looking basically at the very similar data, but from different perspectives, so from the perspective of genres. And yes, I'm normalizing the number of um, like awards per series because originally I didn't. And it's just, you know, mm -hmm. uh, dividing it by the number of awards, uh, sorry, number of series. Uh, but doing this makes it uh, comparable, the genres. Uh, so... Mm, that's what I did. Quite last minute, actually. I think it was only a few, maybe even hours yes. before the deadline for this. So that oh, was yeah, that. I remember that. Yeah, and I also added additional information to the viz 
to the size of the bubble. So that's the number of series per the genre. So that's yeah. another thing the user can consider while interacting with this. And, and now we're getting to the main part or the third sheet of your biz where we're soon going to see one of my favorite parts here, which actually the the waffle chart. We, it's a funny thing that we had almost like a food theme going on with the ironist competition this year. I think there were some 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 laughs around the pie chart and and the waffles and and the, the what. I mean, this is this is a very interesting choice of uh, of uh, of charts here, where, where each square display used to be consisting of like hundreds and hundreds of smaller squares arranged in tiles, and each square represent like in this case a show that we're gonna that you're gonna allow the the mm -hmm. user to select and click on, right? How how, how did that come to you? How how did you approach that? Mm -hmm. Well, I wanted to add some uh, interactivity, which we will see a bit later. Um, and this was a good idea to put the URL into detail and you know then allow the user to click there. So even though now it's a big waffle chart, in the end it will be just one square of the waffle, but uh, that one could be used for that. Yeah. And here uh, is one thing I'm quite happy with, uh, and that's the let's say TV series card where you see all the important information about the series. And I was thinking, you know, I wanted to add a little like Easter egg into the visualization, like something you might not see at the first glance. And in this case, it's the number of uh, evenings it takes you to see the series. So um, I think that's like a little, at least to me, uh, a little funny twist uh, on the information there. So. That one I liked. So, and then this is your signature style of using drawings in your visualizations, right? It's a TV. How how did you come up with that idea that we're going to visualize it through the old-fashioned TV set? Well, it's uh, quite, it, it was quite straightforward to me uh, since it's TV series, you know, and you watch TV series on TV. And I know that currently these uh, machines don't look like this uh, anymore, uh, mostly, but uh, I just remembered the old TV we used to have and how you had to stand up and go press that button to change the channel or, you know, turn on the volume. So. I was like, yeah, there let's no have remote a controls. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, let's do a little all this mo moment here. And as you mentioned, this is uh, apparently starting to be my style with the little sketches. And uh, I just played around in Procreate, which is one tool I uh, really enjoy using. And I just edit these things uh, and then used it as a background here in Tableau as an image. And did you mention Procreate tool? The the tools, yeah. How yeah. How did you? How long have you been using that? And how how, how difficult is that? A known tool to be using to build backgrounds in Tableau business, or how? Did um, you... Not sure. I think uh, there are other tools uh, for graphics that are being definitely used also by me, <laughs> but this one um, I was using for a bit different purpose. It's more a graphics tool, you know, and you can do some really cool paintings in there um, and I just thought okay maybe I can use this you know you can export the thing to PNG format mm. so I was like why shouldn't I use it for Tableau as well and uh, I used it for my original submission for IronVis last year and then I used it also here and now I need to call out right here sort of but now we see the coloring the coloring you used for your your stack bar charts together with your your colors of your header is there. There, there you see. What, what are those colors? What, what do they represent in this context? Yeah, yep. So the yellow one, uh, pretty apparent. This is the IMDb brand color, uh, and since it's quite you know vibrant and catchy color, I didn't want want to go too crazy with the other color combinations. So I just went with a really dark green, which is used for the sketch, even though it looks like it's a black color and also with another shade of the green. So, um, and yeah, some additional colors like the gray, you know, and uh, the, the, the light blue, uh, light, sorry, light gray uh, yeah. background. So. Uh, because I, it's very I think... similar in, 
I'm sorry. <laughs> it's very so I, I similar to, to what you. Yeah. No, you go ahead. <laughs> Sorry, I just wanted to add last thing there that I just, uh, you know, wanted to emphasize a few things. So I draw the attention yeah. there with the color. That's it. No, it's very similar to what you were using in your entry for uh, uh, what is love uh, visualization yeah. and how you use colors and so forth there too. Um, exactly. Sorry. And, Maybe and here we're now adding the... Yeah, the, call out the like, buttons here because we didn't cover those, but... Uh, as you could see, I was just using a navigation button here, like a little circle around uh, that little sign on the button. And also on the other dashboards, there were also the buttons used, which allows the user, you know, to either go uh, through the charts or the buttons. And here I'm also using the title as a legend to save space a bit, make the dashboard appear a bit cleaner which is a nice way to save some space. It's, it's a very good tip to all users who want to like start building this to, to, to save up real estate and everything on, mm -hmm. on, the, on the screens to use this trick of using the legend. Yeah, that's, that's a great, great use of technology there. Also and, here I um, see the, the list of series on the right side. And uh, that's something that I wanted to, you know, uh, like have a reminiscence of the like program of the newspaper where you have the list of things you can see, you can watch in TV mm -hmm. and you just kind of select what you want. You get the information, then you pick what you're watching. Yeah. Well, that's a, that's a very good, good use here. It's like the American TV guide where you go through everything and you select what you want to see and yeah, exactly. And get to that part. Yeah. yeah. That is here so, I was so what was going through your mind here towards the end? Now you're like almost done and you're on the stage in front of all those people. Like, do you feel good or are you more nervous? So what's the feeling well, right now? <laughs> the closer I was to the end, uh, the more nervous I was uh, to not make any mistake. As you can see, I made here because I used the okay. wrong URL attribute. But I just wanted to make sure that, you know, very, when you click somewhere, it does what it should do. You know, all the tool tips are taken care of. Um, mm. There's no like redundant information. And yeah, I was definitely like happy on one end that it, I made it, you know, in that time um, constraint. But also I was, uh, I was a bit nervous. If was I it difficult to practice to make, to make the time or, or how, how was that for you? Um, well, it was, um, I wouldn't say it was difficult to practice, but there, there was definitely some practice needed. So it was mm. time consuming, let's say. Um, but it was, it was challenging. It was a nice challenge, I would say, to put it together. No doubt. And you did very well in front of all those people to build this on the time and, and everything. That's, that's Thank great. You. No, I mean, uh, you, you had a fantastic visualization and a great experience, of course, together with the whole team there in, 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 uh, in San Diego. But to close out, I mean, what I think is so remarkable about your visualization is like we, we touched about it in the beginning that you tell a story about, in this case, gender inequality in TV series history through the decades and, and being able to tell that story and get to a point like two three sheets later, you can select a a TV series that you could like watch or anything. I mean, it's bringing that story out is what makes this visualization so great, I think. So that's totally a, a, a 10 in, in my book. So congratulations, Pasha. It was great, great working with you. And, uh, wish thank you. Great and thank you for having me here. <laughs>